Hello, my name is Christine DiCarlo, and I'm the American Association of Colleges of Osteopathic Medicines, or ACOMS, Media and Public Affairs Manager. I'm joined today by Dr. Linda Gray Solis, Assistant Professor of Applied Humanities at the University of the Incarnate Word School of Osteopathic Medicine, or UIW SOM, Chair of ACOMS Council on Diversity and Equity, as well as Dr. Rebecca Sanchez, Assistant Professor of Microbiology, also at UIW SOM. In addition to co-chairing UIW SOM's own DEIJ committee, which they've named Unity, Dr. Solis and Sanchez are also leading UIW SOM's Anti-Racist Transformation in Medical Education, or the Art in Med Ed project. Art in Med Ed is a three-year project funded by the Josiah Macy Jr. Foundation to replicate the Icon School of Medicine and Mount Sinai's change management strategy at 11 partner, partner medical schools in the United States and Canada. UIW SOM is one of the inaugural schools chosen for the project's 2021 cohort and was the only osteopathic medical school selected. Thank you so much, Dr. Solis and Dr. Sanchez for speaking with me today about this vitally important project. Thank you for having us. Yes, thank you. So to begin the interview, how did you hear about this project and why did you know UIW SOM would be a good fit? So I heard about it first, I believe I saw a, an um, ad for it on a listserv, I think, of uh, medical schools, maybe. And uh, so I saw it there and I thought, well, let me look a little bit more into that. So I did look into it and it seemed to align um, with, with what uh, I knew that our dean wanted and with what I wanted as well um, for our um, diversity and equity and inclusion and justice efforts. And uh, so I decided to apply and then I, the application date was like 10 days away. And so I was like, ah, um, so, uh, but yeah, but I, it just looked like a good fit. It just looked like it aligned with our um, school's mission uh, uh, for social justice and, and all of that. So I just decided even with just 10 days, just to take a shot and apply and see what happens. And then we were selected. Well, congratulations. That's impressive for you all too. in such a quick turnaround time, get the project grant. Um, so what do you hope to accomplish over the course of this project? And are there any measurable goals? The theme, I guess, that we're taking with us, it's really the question of, you know, what do we want our school to look like at the end of this three-year program? Um, and so that's really how we've, um, gone about, uh, you know, uh, tackling this project. Um, we'd really love for the end goal to be where, um, you know, faculty, all faculty are just aware of, say, the materials that they're presenting to the learners, um, you know, and, and to, to be more diverse and more inclusive. Um, we, we want our learners also to be aware of how their communication, you know, what they're saying, um, you know, affects others. Um, and then also just, we really, I think both feel very passionate about this being the school or the place where, um, you know, everyone feels heard. Um, everyone feels like they're heard, they're seen, they matter. Um, and that, you know, we're, we're going to be able to have those hard conversations and work through it as a group. So I think those are, while very big goals, um, that's what we're, I think, striving for in the end. One of the things that is a challenge for me personally is that the ICON uh, School of Medicine model for art and med ed is uh, a change management model. It's not a, it's not a sort of diversity, equity, and inclusion model. It's a change model, and it really emphasizes um, like communications and having those hard conversations at the beginning so that you create um, a brave space, right, where people feel heard, like Rebecca was saying, and they feel um, important and valued by everyone. And so, um, so that's something that challenges me is the fact that, like, there aren't any goals, they're up for us, the, the goals are all up to us and what we need at our school. Um, and then uh, the framework that, that the uh, art and med ed gives us will help us reach those goals. Um, so how is the work progressing so far and have there been any early successes or challenges either from the COVID-19 pandemic or other factors? One of the early successes is just our ability to gather people, our, our own cohort. Um, there's uh, 14 of us in the what we call the guiding coalition and um, 
so we've been able to gather uh, in person twice, which was wonderful. And we were able to uh, really start having those hard conversations. And we have um, all levels of our campus represented. So we have students, we have uh, staff and faculty and administrators. So sort of we're all there and we have started having those um, difficult conversations and getting everybody on board and sort of thinking through what we want our school to look like at the end of this transformation. Um, and so I think that alone um, is, is a really, you know, quick win for us. Uh, what's been really interesting, successful, and it has taken time, it'll take more time, but we have had these hard conversations. We have brought up really good questions where there's that awkward silence in the room and um, everybody kind of, you know, you're nervous to say anything, but then we've slow, slowly have, um, you know, grown this trust of our group that now it takes less time for people to speak up and there people are more brave to, um, you know, offer input, especially learners, right? If you think about their position with us as faculty and then there are deans in the room. Um, so that's been a, one of the, I think, biggest successes for us and probably most shocking that we've been able to do that in the little bit of time that we have. Yeah, that's definitely great to hear that that's happened so early in the project. I think that's a good uh, model, the way that's set up to get that, you know, for, at the front and center of it. Um, so for the Art and Med Ed project, it recognizes that addressing racism in medical education will require systemic change. What are some steps that colleges of osteopathic medicine can take to initiate transformational changes on their campuses? I would say the first thing that you would do, which we did do in meeting one, is to really define the terms for everyone, for the group. Um, you know, as educators, we always say education is important, you know, um, but what does that really even mean? Um, and so some specific, I guess, session objectives um, started with just defining the terms. Um, you know, what um, language is gonna matter, right? And it carries weight. And so you want to also tell people, you can't be afraid to use words like anti-racist. Um, to use the word bigot or to use the word white supremacy. You know, um, our first meeting, we defined these terms, we talked about these terms. You need to be able to comfortably, you know, use those words to be able to face this. You can't just um, hide from that. Um, and just that to, to have people on board to say, look, change has to happen. You have to have uh, where everyone realizes, right, that it has to happen. And I think getting that into the open is another way for that as well. I do think a lot of the, um, what needs to happen in our schools or the ways other medical schools, osteopathic medical schools can approach this is we have that lovely mind, body, spirit connection. And honestly, this is what this is. We're talking about, we want everyone on our campus to be able to bring their whole selves, to be able to bring whatever physical body they're in, no matter what they look like. Um, we want them to bring their, um, you know, their intellect and their mind and their diverse experiences that brought them um, to where they are. And then, you know, we, with spirit, we want to we want, we want to change hearts and minds. And sometimes you have to change hearts first before the mind comes along, right? And so I think, you know, all of this is coming back around to like, use your words and define your words and don't be afraid to speak up. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, and to add to that, I was gonna say, you know, what you were saying, don't be afraid to speak up. We've really been, you know, I, at least for me, I know in the classroom and, with the clubs that I'm faculty advisor for, you know, really just pushing, um, you know, to for the students, for everyone to just be brave enough to have those conversations. You know, let's create a brave space, define that. And, you know, I know a lot of learners that are in the clubs I'm with, associated with will, you know, a hard something, a hard topic will come up and, you know, one will just jump up and say, this is a brave space. And it just makes me so proud, right? Because I think people are starting to catch on. And so I think like, you know, to address the systemic changes, you need to have more and more people. It needs to filter through that this is going to be a brave space. We're going to have hard conversations, but we're going to talk about them. I really love 
that phrase brave space. I haven't heard that before, but I think that's a really good way to describe what you all are fostering because it can be really uncomfortable to talk about some of these issues, especially like you all said in that setting when there are people of different power dynamics at play. So I think that's really interesting and a really good way to frame it. Um, so ACOM is committed and COM deans have unanimously pledged to address systemic inequity and integrate health equity issues into the medical school curriculum. What lessons have you learned from this project that can help osteopathic medical schools collectively improve diversity in medical education? First and foremost, we have to collectively see that there is a problem, right? This lack of diversity is a problem and has been a problem um, you know, for a century now. And um, so I think that's the first thing is you just have to acknowledge that you know, while I may in my white self, I think, you know, I go to work and you know everything's fine and I don't see anything wrong. So I have to open my ears and listen to people who don't look like me, who have had different experiences. And, and we all need to do that. And we need to remember too, that just because someone else's experience doesn't mirror mine makes them wrong. Right. And that sounds again, it sounds so simplistic, but the way our brains work, like we just sort of take our um, worldview and sort of lay it on everyone around us and just assume that how I believe is how they believe, et cetera. And so um, I think just really just acknowledging that this is a problem that we do need to be more intentional about diversifying, not just our matriculating classes, but our faculty as well um, and staff and administration. Right. You can't expect that the people that this is going to affect or those most impacted, right, are the ones that have to initiate the change. So, for instance, we can't expect our students of color to start these hard conversations. Um, I think what I've learned is it's been really important to realize we have to be a voice to and an ally as well. And we can't um, just sit back and watch it and say, oh, well, my day's been great. Um, you know, we have to realize that, you know, there are things presented in the classroom that can be better for them, you know, for all students or, you know, some of the conversations we have can be better. Um, the words we use can be better. So I think that's a, another thing we've learned from this. Yeah, thank you. I know that'll be helpful for the other colleges of osteopathic medicine as they work to make some improvements as well. Um, so UIW SOM is the only osteopathic medical school that was selected for this project. How has that shaped your experience and has it influenced the cohort as a whole? I do think just the focus on mind, body, spirit, and I think the longer we work in this cohort, um, the more opportunity we'll have to just introduce mind, body, spirit as a foundation for what we're doing. Um, so yeah, so I, and I look forward to those conversations. Um, you know, it's really on our shoulders to do this right um, or to at least put the best effort in. Um, how I tell my students, it's, you know, be 100% present and 100% on board. Um, and I think that we really need to do that because others are looking at us, right? And so um, even if we fail in some areas, at least we can say we did our due diligence and we tried. Um, and so, I don't know, I feel like there's a lot of leadership responsibility. And so it's kind of made this whole experience just um, more serious in a way, right? Like, I mean, we're the only one, so um, no pressure, but. <laughs> right. Well, congratulations, though, on being the only osteopathic medical school. I think that's a huge honor. Um, and it's really exciting for the osteopathic community to have a voice in this project. So your leadership is definitely appreciated and I think will be a good model for everybody. Um, so for our final question, how do you think the Art in MedEd project will impact UIW SOM's broader diversity, equity, and inclusion efforts? Well, I mean, for sure, one, uh, above all, I mean, we hope to improve it, right? Um, we hope to identify concrete areas where we can um, do better and, you know, also motivate others to get others on board. Um, we just really want to make it more equitable and more inclusive, um, you know, and there's there's been areas that we've identified, um, you know, already and and these are long conversations right it, it's a slow process, but um, I think that at least over these next three years we're going to have more and more conversations I think we'll get quicker about having them and and making decisions. 
And then we hope that through this, you know, we're going to attract more students of color and diversity in the physician workforce. Um, you know, to our school as well, we're already very diverse, but I think, you know, we'll just attract more because we do have this program and we're trying and making active efforts um, to do this. Absolutely. And I think that takes us back to to really like listening well. And I hope that one of the outcomes that we get is that everyone on our campus understands what listening well means and understands um, cultural humility, right? Like not laying your own culture over everyone else, not thinking that your culture is the only way of doing things, the best way of doing things. Um, and I, I also hope that, that we grow awareness enough in this area that uh, faculty will stop using um, potentially harmful and insulting images and words in the classroom, and that we will be able to bring diversity to things like images of conditions. What's that look like on, on, on darker skin? And we've had faculty say, oh, I don't know. I never thought about it. Right, like so. So let's let's learn how to listen. And, and if someone brings something, a student brings something to you, let's learn how to not get defensive. Let's learn how to listen without pushing back, um, and learn from that person. Right, we can all learn something from everyone. Yeah, I think that's a super important point as well as medical educators. I mean, the work is, I feel like it's important for everybody, but in the medical education sphere, it just seems even more important to get this right, just for patients and, you know, our future physicians, we need to improve the health system. So I salute you all for taking up this really important work. And it's, I know it's going to be difficult and long and challenging, but I look forward to connecting with you potentially further along the project and sharing any updates you have. It's really exciting to see that you've already made some, some good progress and had some of those hard conversations. And those are even starting to get easier. So that's great. That's really good to hear. So thank you both again. I really appreciate you taking the time to speak about your work um, and the Art and Med Ed project. It's, it's super important again, and I know it'll have a really transformational impact. So thank you both. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much.